Hi, I'm Bob Hughes with JD Squared. I'm standing next to our CNC HP 100 horizontal press. Um, in a series of videos, we've been describing the different parts of the press. In this video, we're going to describe the hydraulic system, why we designed it and built it the way we do. To start off with, let's look at the cylinder. The HP 100 generates 18.8 tons of pressure. We have the cylinder is custom made for us by Parker out of Georgia. It is an NFPA cylinder, but we looked at that and we thought we, we, we could do better. Now you got to realize an NFPA cylinder is a world-class cylinder. This is not an agricultural cheap cylinder. This is an NFPA cylinder. But what we did, some of the changes we had to make to it was one, we wanted to go to a larger ram. So we've gone to a two and a half inch diameter ram where a standard cylinder is two and a quarter. And it turns out that a two and a half inch ram is as large as we can physically put into it. They cannot go any bigger than that. We also had them install different wear bands in the cylinder up here. Um, essentially the wear bands we're putting in are rated at 20 times the wear um, resistance and the strength of a normal NFPA cylinder. This was an expensive option, but we thought, hey, this is the press, and we're not in the warranty business. We want you to have a press that runs and runs. So we thought that was a worthwhile investment. If you've watched the structural video, I described that on top of the frame, we have the two tower blocks that bolt to the frame, and then we have four bolts, 16 millimeter bolts, that attach the, the um, cylinder to that frame. Now, in this kind of a cylinder, that's normally all anybody does. We looked at it and we thought, man, maybe we could do a little bit better. It's all in the name of rigidity. So what we had Parker do was add rear lugs to the cylinder. So now instead of bolting the cylinder down in four places, we bolted the cylinder down in six places. And hopefully you can see it on this black background. Um, but that's basically the cylinder right there. Now, the cylinder is powered by a five horsepower motor. It's rated for 24-7 operation. It's a three-phase motor. We can supply single-phase motor um, however, expect a huge price increase. It could be as much as $1,000 just because once you get up into the higher single phase motors, uh, the price just seems to go through the roof. So you might actually, if you, if you have problem getting three phase, it may be one of those things where you may want to look at a three phase converter. It's going to be much cheaper than us um, a setting up a single phase motor for you. However, we can do it. Now, let's, um, we've talked about the motor feeding the pump. Also, the hydraulics show we have on the machine a 3,000 PSI gauge. That's what the cylinder is rated at. We rate the machine to 3,000 PSI. The gauge is marked off in PSI and bars, and considering the machine is designed metric and for a world market, we felt that was fairly important. Turning our attention to the hydraulic tank, now this is the motor and the system with Parker valving and all right here. Even though we've attempted to go metric as much as we can, like all the little bolts and everything like that, there are some inch bolts in here, 440, stuff like that, that, that's just the way it is. If this thing blows up, give us a call. If you're in Australia, we'll air freight you a new one, but that's the way it is. Um, this is our hydraulic cylinder. And on our original prototype, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, our hydraulic tank. Now, on our original prototypes, we were running a seven gallon tank. And we, the more we looked at it, it just didn't fit the character of the machine. Everything has to be heavy duty. It was made out of 16 gauge metal. We just didn't care for it. So what we did, was we designed our own. This one here is right at about a 14 gallon capacity, a half inch from the top. It's, it's made out of 12 gauge steel. It is double welded. Um, I think you can see it. It's double well, it's welded on the outside and the inside to help prevent leaks. We have a, a temperature gauge right here that really isn't, its purpose isn't really to show you the level because obviously if you're filling it to a half inch from the top, you're, you're not going to see the top, but it will indicate if you're low on fluid. It also has the temperature gauge in it in Fahrenheit and centigrade so that you can monitor the, the temperature of the hydraulic oil if you need for some reason. Let's say the machine is in an automated assembly line and it's being controlled by external sources. That will be talked about in the, in the video about the controller. Um, it, it may be something that somebody might be interested in, but we thought let's put that on there right there. Um, that's pretty much it for the hydraulic series, uh, the hydraulic video. Um, Go, to the, go check out the other videos, and we'll, we'll talk about the controller and how we actually make the hydraulics move. But before I, before I do go away, let's talk about one thing real quick, I almost forgot, is the motor and the controller have different switches. So we can turn the motor on, you can hear it. It's not objectionable noise, but there, there's times when you're gonna wanna turn it on and off. Part of the safety features, and we're just gonna show you this one feature because it has to do with this, is if somebody gets hurt and they hit the e-stop button, you're going to hear a horn go off. 
That's to notify the people in the shop that something's gone wrong. But the switch has killed power to the motor, which means everything stops right there, you know? Um, once it goes back off, the motor comes back on. And that's really all there is to say about the hydraulics. Um, please check out our other videos, and thank you for considering JD Squared.